ask, we were talking about the difference between um, a um, deed of assignment and okay, the and agreement that we do. The normal agreement that a lawyer does, you know, when you're buying land, the tripartite <laughs> agreement that the seller, sorry, the seller signs, the buyer signs, and the lawyer keeps one. So what's the difference yeah. between those two documents and which one is more important? Like which one may weighs more? Which one uh, gives you more assurance of uh, valid time? So um, for a document to transfer interest in land, mm -hmm. it must be registrable. When I say registrable, it means, like I was saying before, you know, we can move, take it to the governor's office and get it signed by the governor. Register it, you pay stamp duties, you pay all these things, I pay all those things, that apart. Now, the problem becomes, oh, and that for it to prove title to land, you must, must have registered it. So it means it must be registrable. Okay. Now, contracts generally are not so registrable. Deeds, on the other hand, are they are the ones that we know that, you no, know, the moment you hear registrable instruments, you hear deed of mortgage, deed of assignment, deed of, uh, all these your deeds, it comes to your mind. Yeah. Mm. So personally, and I think in general practice too, a deed makes me more comfortable. Okay. The deed is saying, ah, I own this land though, and I'm assigning this portion of the land to this person. A contract of sale, as it is, is a contract. It's just sale. There's no option for registration. Now, you can register it, but naturally, it's not supposed to be registrable. Okay. So, be safe. Anytime we are doing land transactions that involve, involves tra transfer of titles or land, Always go with the deed of assignment. Okay, so what if the person selling to me does not have a deed of assignment? That means I'm not even yeah. buying valid title. Get your lawyer to, to have a deed of assignment drafted on your behalf and okay. signed. So it can be drafted. It doesn't have to pre-exist. <laughs> yes, it can be drafted. It is usually drafted. Now, it is always advisable to draft each deed separately. This is why. Lands are not coming from the same way. Okay. From the same way. So the kind of deed, the kind of information that will be in the deed for Mr. A will be different from the kind of information in the deed for Mr. B. Simple example. So land, it was gotten in the colonial era. They gave it to a person. When the person died, the children got probate. Mm -hmm. And they were named the executors. Those executors transferred it to someone else. When, when that someone else died, before he died, he sold it to a company. Okay. The company sold it to, you understand, the land had gone through a lot of hands. Naturally, your deed of assignment will contain all this information such that you can trace the land to the first owner. Okay. It will be different from the land that is family owned and then you are buying from the family. The way we will go about the recital, the history of the land will be different. Okay. Now, it is going to be different even if that family land has, has title. They have gotten C of O for that family land. So deeds, I usually, is advice. I, I will naturally advise that if you want to get the land, a deed of assignment is most appropriate. And ensure that your lawyer, not the seller's lawyer now, the purchase. Yeah, the buyer's lawyer. Lawyer. Does it. Standard advice. Uh, I know in some places they say, oh, uh, it's estate. It's only us that can do that agreement. No. You have the option to say, no, I want my lawyer to draft this agreement. The Even reason the is, is that in a contract of sale, it's the buyer's lawyer that drafts the agreement. The reason is because it is expected that your lawyer is looking out for your interest. Exactly. Since you are not exactly. assuming responsibility for the land. So that's it. So um, the next question I want to ask is, how far should I look 
when I'm um, trying to verify a valid title. So before you answer, <laughs> before you, I, <laughs> I have a feeling I know why you're laughing, but before you answer that question, this is part A. Part A is that um, if I want to buy land now, I've asked all mm -hmm. the questions and uh, it feels safe. And then mm -hmm. um, I start building, maybe nobody's troubling me, nothing. Like the land generally feels safe. Do I need to take a step further to do extra verification? Like when, when does the need for verification or extra looking out for, is it valid title? When does it arise? Is it when there's a dispute or at the initial point of purchase? Okay. That's part A. The part B is how far should I look? Okay. The issue of verification of title mm -hmm. is it should be the first point of contact. Is the first thing a purchaser should do when it comes to land. See, personally, I know lands in Supreme Court now. They've been fighting over mm -hmm. it for 20 years. Yeah. One They've been fighting over it for 20 years because somebody didn't do what it ought to do. Before you start talking price, oh, I'm interested in this land. The first thing you should do is carry out your search. Investigate the land as deep as possible because it feels safe. Experience teaches, teaches me that it's not safe. It might be safe for me. I might not have issues. But my children, or I don't want the property to devolve into my children. What if an issue comes up while I'm not there? How do I protect my children? We should think about all these things. So before you start putting pen to paper that I know, hey, be, a proper investigation into the land must be done. Simple things like, does this, does the previous owner pay? Um, land use charge. Mm -hmm. If I can get land use charge for a land today, you can find out almost everything you need to know about the land. Mm. But we are in Nigeria, a lot of people don't pay taxes. <laughs> Talk less so, of yes. Exactly. So, something as simple as land use charge is enough to put a seasoned lawyer off a land transaction. Mm -hmm. something as simple as tax clearance. Oh, so the person I'm buying from, does the person have tax clearance? How long has this property been like this? It, we, we, when, when we are buying land, we are not just buying the land as it is. We are buying liabilities. Mm -hmm. We are buying opportunities. Mm -hmm. You need to consider all these pros and cons before you get into it. So it, while a land might not have issues, tied to wise, what if the land is prone to a monile issues? Monile <laughs> wala, which is which is like the bulk of our problems that we have in Nigeria, especially family land. You notice that when we spoke about family land, I asked that you should please dwell on family land because the issue that we normally, I'm a mediator and uh, we mediate land disputes a lot. And the issue that we most always almost have, if that English is correct, is that, you know, the, a company, for instance, in fact, with foreign companies, most times, that's what we have issues with. They would come and say, we bought the land from this person. We've been transacting with this person as the head of the family and the principal members. And then maybe they list it before and then they decided to buy it after some time, pay millions of Naira. And then some side of the family will show up and say, we did not know about that transaction. And we are key members of this family. They didn't carry us. Okay. In fact, we did one that... Uh, the company had to, they went to court and the family got a judgment against the, the company that made them lose 30 million naira sale price that they paid for the land. Till today, wow. they're still disputing over that land. I feel like the company is like boxed into a corner because there's a lot of uh, machinery and uh, you know development on the land because it's been leased for several years before they decided to buy it. They lost 30 million and there's, it's wow. not yet Uhuru for them now because Bottom line, they have to pay another money. They have to pay another money. Each land. time we meet, a new set, a new side of the family comes to the meeting exactly. with a new story. So that's so, so that will lead us to the second part of the question: How far and what are the places you should look for each type of okay. land? So, so for for where to go to or how far you should go to, 
my opinion, my personal mantra is as far as possible. As far as possible. Okay. So you can go to the Corporate Affairs Commission. Okay. Corporate Affairs Commission for lands that companies own and they are listed or leased or used as uh, security for loans. Okay, okay. EAC. Okay. You can go to, in short, number one on the list, the lands registry. Of each state. Any land you are buying and they are telling you, ah, this land is registered. The first place you should go is the lands registry. Ah, okay. This person is saying this land is registered. Is it the person that is selling to me that is registered to? If not, you understand? We ask all those questions. Oh, this is the person selling to me. Oh, is the person fine? Oh, it's not the person. Be apprehensive of buying that kind of land. Oh, is my uncle? Is it your uncle that will sign the deed for me? Is he your? You understand? Always remember the person that shows up on in the land registry as the owner. That's the only person that can sign your deed for the title to be valid. Okay. That's number one. Number two, your corporate affairs commission deals with lands hold owned by corporate entities. So sometimes companies buy land, use those lands as securities, use those lands as uh, they 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 give other bodies lien over those properties. Okay. So in that kind of instance, corporate affairs commission would afford you all the information you need. Now, naturally, every transaction that has to do with land, whether you're mortgaging it, whether you're using it as security, whether you are leasing it. You know, leases are, are rents that are above three years. Mm -hmm. All those should be naturally registered in the land's registry. So if I have a land and I'm a company and we, are, we have used this land as security for loan, we should naturally take the person that borrowed us the money should naturally go and register their interest against that land in the land registry. Okay. But in Nigeria, sometimes they don't. So that you do not fall into the problem of, ah, but I did search in a land registry. I advise that you go to CAC. Okay. Fine. You go to court too. Excuse me. You yes. go to the court too. Now, why? Somebody has died in the states. No way. Now they have gotten letters of administration. Uh, it is only his administrators that can transfer their interests. And the only place you can verify who the administrators have is probate registry. Now, even in the probate registry, when somebody dies and you're trying to get the grant of probate, you're supposed to go there with the list of all the properties that person owns. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're going to go with That's the nice. list. Title, copies of title documents. So be, when that shows up and you go to the probate registry and you, oh, fine, this property belongs to this person, it's showed here. Another instance is the case of litigation land. So court awards land to a certain people. They went to court and won land. If you're going to do search for that land, if, oh, fine, this land, oh, we, we sue and we want, you can go to court and ask to check the court records for that matter. So I was talking about recitals the other time. Mm -hmm. When recitals are coming up, all this information will be there. Oh, fine, this land in 20, 2002, they sued so, so so family in suit number, whatever, whatever, whatever. The matter got to Supreme Court with Supreme Court number. It means that if you go to Supreme Court and check that suit number that was put down for you, you'll be able to see that, oh, the court said this land now belongs to this person, which means, oh, fine. Since court has awarded the title in the land to this person, it is safe for me to buy. To recap, whenever we are trying to verify the title to land, Mm -hmm. go as far as possible. There are other places you can search that, okay, for instance, you, you, you can search in individual companies too. Okay. Uh, search in mortgage banks and mortgage 
institutions. Sometimes you search in commercial banks too. Uh -huh. Because they are loan facilitators. I use this land as a security for loan. <laughs> Understand? I want to go to the bank. Is it true? Have you released it? Oh, I mortgaged this land. Oh, is it true? Have you released it? So naturally, I would always advise you. You want to buy land, I get it. You think your lawyer is going to collect too much. You're looking for somebody to give 20000 or 15000 <laughs> But see, the stress that comes after. If mm -hmm. you a lawyer is these things, naturally, Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to search it. We need to search it. We need to search it. We need to search it, and it's going to do all that. But because you did not involve a lawyer, mm -hmm. you won't do all the. So when you are now building, one bank will come and say, "Ah, they use this land to borrow money from us, and we have come to collect our land." So and at that point, that lawyer's agreement will not even hold water for you, because I know that most agreements that lawyers do. They don't contain all these details of oh this land court document uh sorry uh was a court judgment oh it's a that's <laughs> collateral they don't contain this thing the recital is just like this person got this land from so so person who got it from his father in the year 1922 and uh, that one got it from his father and they've been settlers on this land without any form of hindrance or uh, encumbrance whatever that's basically what's in most recitals so why is that. <laughs> I have seen in practice a recital of four pages. Wow, I'd love to see that, something like that. It was really in-depth and beautiful. It took us from first settlers to excision, mm -hmm. how they challenged the excision, got to Supreme Court, came back and got the land gazetted wow. and then transferred the land to some other people. I hope that... Before I... it got to the best part, was wow. now buying now. It was so detailed and but the guys must have paid detailed money too. <laughs> and, 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 and was, if you picked up that uh whatever and you went if you decided I was going to go to Supreme Court, oh. you would consistent from there you move to um Gazette and oh fine. They quoted everything word for word, the places that they needed to to um do um uh, land type um land numbers oh register as number this page this or so so, so it was, I was like no this is this is sourcing to work that's even already so reassuring for me a, a third party just hearing this is really reassuring not to talk of the real clients that owns you know the transaction you know so um i think that the takeaway from this is that it's important uh brief your lawyer properly so let them go to the uttermost for you when trying to verify a uh, uh, valid title for land. So um, I want to ask about um, land grabbing in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing because I know that land grabbing is like, is like the order of the day, order of mm. the day. Uh, you know that a colleague once told me something that he said it's a saying. I am trying to find it online. I could not. So maybe it's offline. But he said that it's actually a saying that he who buys land from the Oloto family buys suits. Like it's... In Lagos. Yes, in Lagos. He said it. Yeah. He... No, it's right. Yeah. So then I now, I now changed it to my own from what I've experienced. I said he who buys family land in Ibadan, buy suits. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, that's what we've been seeing, you know, as mediator, as lawyer, you know, there's tons of cases in court, tons of cases before mediation panels, you know, about uh, uh, family land. And most of them is this Omonile Wala. And there are some people that have even constituted. Now, the issue is that it's not, when you when we talk about Omonile, now we're not even talking about family members now. That are saying that we didn't involve us in this transaction. We're talking about aliens, people who have like to the family refrash thugs who have constituted themselves into a group. I don't want to name yeah. them, but I know that I'm friendly one criminal matter. Um, you know, uh, it was a clash between a set of Omonile and another set of Omonile. You know, they murdered themselves and all of that. So it's a murder charge before the court now. So these people have turned it into their livelihood. You start yeah, to do, yeah. you show up, and then you have to one retain the services of a contrary or uh, an opposing or monile sect to protect you against the other. Right. 
Yes, and then okay. you have to settle them and all of that. So maybe just talk about land grabbing and how to avoid that after I might have okay. obtained a valid title. Yes, number one, land grabbing is a serious crime in Nigeria. I know for a fact that most states in Nigeria now have laws outlawing yes. land grabbing with steep penalties for land grabbers. Well, is there enforcement? In my, own, in my own opinion, land grabbing has reduced the bids. You know, before you buy land, you buy land from a family, pay everything you're supposed to pay, get C or four, and then one riffraff will come and say, ah, you cannot do anything on this land until you mm -hmm. settle lot. Until you settle lot. And they ask for ridiculous amounts. When you are trying to lay foundation, you settle them. You exactly. want to put, you want to take your house, you want to do lintel, you settle them. You're trying to roof, you settle them. When they want to bring in paint to paint the house that you bought with your money, you yeah. settle them. Now, yeah. I understand. And remember, I was telling you the other time that valid title is not the only thing you consider when you're purchasing that. It isn't. Okay. Uh, naturally, if I am in a land transaction and, oh, I've seen, oh, this is the place we want to buy, fine. We've done all our search on book, on paper, in court, oh, okay, the, the land is not subject to litigation, it's not this, it's not, we've done all that. I still want to go through that place, speak to some people there. Huh? Oh, okay, this place, oh, do you have issues with Omonile? You understand? And then please, as soon as possible, I know we don't have so much trust in our security, but please report these people to the police. Okay. Very important. Now, on the other side of different sects of the families, this is why you need to conduct due diligence. Why? So I'm buying land from this family, and this is the family head. You know the law about... Uh, Land transferred by family head. Yeah. Without the consent of uh, uh, fa principal family members, is voidable. But the one transferred by uh, family members without the family head is void. I've been issued. Yes. So I, I don't just want to speak with the, the family head. I, if I'm drafting an agreement between a family, eh, I'm not just going to put family head and secretary. Uh, how many are you in this panel? You are seven. We put all your seven names there. Mm -hmm. And all, all seven will sign. Exactly. This is why I don't want, naturally, if I'm doing land agreement and it's family, I'm not expect, I'm expecting nothing less than five members. If it's less than five, I'm scared. Why? Because by the time I took, take family and how many, how small is that family that all their principal members are five? If it is less than five, I am worried. Okay. So All this question should also be worried, just like you are. You should be worried. Okay, fine. Uh, no, don't worry. We are, no, I'm, see, people will disappoint you when there's money on the ground. Mm. When there's more changing hands. People will lie. They will belittle you. They will take you for a fool. It is your job to not allow them to. So um, I'm buying land and it's uh, and it's family and you are telling me it's just two of you, <laughs> for Christ's sakes. And a nuclear family consists of only two people. An extended family mm -hmm. that should you understand? Mm -hmm. So you have family, you have secretary, and you are saying you are enough. No, you can't be enough. Mm -hmm. And if you have done your due diligence, you should be able, you should have found out about other aspects of the family. That's why I said usually you should go to the custodians of history, mm. the community. Oh, yeah, okay, these people they have another family in Ibadan, mm -hmm. or they have another family that the their father that one was the man's son, but he moved out of here and moved to Sokoto. You understand. Yeah. Oh, he's not going to be able to sign, but you are going to ensure. The reason is because when push comes to shove, mm -hmm. nobody will be able to sign back. So, Omonile is a big issue in Nigeria. It has reduced anyways, but it's not yet there. But okay. still, there's so much you can do. You need security forces, 
because those guys come with dangerous weapons. Yes, and some even go diabolical. So I want exactly. to ask if uh, at uh, at some point I find out that you know I have purchased an invalid title, a defective title, what do I do? What do I do? That's uh, one. <laughs> I don't know why my purchases are into parts. I, because of where you stopped, I want to give an example of you know a woman who came uh, and um, this is her story. She, you know, you said that uh, if you are seeing three, five, uh, less than five, you're scared. So this woman purchased land from a well-known family in Ibadan. And she did all due diligence. She asked the questions, the right questions, you know, and all of that. They took her to the land. They signed, they did agreements, they signed. She even took pictures with them, with the family on the day that, you know, the deed was, um, the, uh, sorry, the agreement was executed and all of that. And still, they, by the time she wanted to start and she, you know, went to drop maybe a truckload of sand to start work, somebody showed up and said, they bought the land. The funny thing is that the person that she appointed to be watching the land for her, like someone in the neighborhood, appears to be <coughs> the person that took another buyer there who has now bought the land. So now someone that's done all due diligence and still ends up in this kind of thing. And then when she goes back to the family house to say, oh, what, what, what's going on? They start to tell her, oh, this person that signed has died. This person that signed has died, has died rather. So let me even ask you, does a land, a sale of land, does it die with the parties? Like if mm -hmm. your seller has died, does that mean your title has elapsed? No. So what, what would you advise that kind of woman before we go back to my first question? What would you advise her to do in that situation? Okay, so this is where- It's family land. Court comes in. This is where the court comes in. If you have done your due diligence, if you have done everything you should do, I know sometimes a lot of these things, most of them, before you get to this point, you've seen the flags, so you're not in it. But sometimes you saw the flags and then you went in or something happened. It happens. This is where enforcement comes in. This is where the law comes in. Okay. The law is clear. If you executed a deed of assignment, there is a, a clause very important there. We call it an indemnity clause. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It means that the moment I decide to activate that clause, whatever interest that has transferred from me to the seller, the moment the seller, the moment is discovered that the seller gave me a void, value yes. value value he has to indemnify me. Mm. It means return me to the point I was before mm. this agreement. Mm -hmm. Don't, I'm not doing it. Return me to the point I was before this agreement happened. We, this is not going to be the first time we'll hear about one family selling lands to five people. Exactly. That's where I was going with it. And uh, usually because we as Nigerians feel that the law takes too long. Yes. To take call. That's the that sort of that most people are who are in this situation. We sort of recite to fate. But this is an important issue. Okay. Why? Because you have signed off your rights on that land. Remember the other time I was telling you that if you buy family land, you might not have enough money on you, but as soon as possible, go and register your title. You know why? Because the moment you register your title, your title becomes legal. Mm. It supersedes every other form of title. It means that the family cannot come back and say, hey, we sold the land to him in mistake. No, you signed. Government has approved it. If someone else comes and says they've sold the land to him, you, the government, you couldn't have sold the land to me. I've registered my own title. It is better for you to go and meet the family. Mm -hmm. Now, if the first person that bought had registered title and the second person was doing due diligence, it would have showed up in the land registry that exactly. To stop going forward. There's this drive of register your land, register your land, register your land. I saw, I saw get your C of O in six months. I saw a lot of advice like that. And it's important. I know this issue of selling land to more than two people is now rampant in your state. Very, very. But and that is 
people don't register their interest in land. My dad is for I'm boom or sure. My dad does refuse to register his interest. <laughs> you understand? He has refused. Yeah. You know, and, and they're like, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, people are not like this. And, no, and then worry. you know the issue of trust too. I know we're a low trust economy, but when it comes to selling transactions, you would be, you would marvel at the kind of trust that people repose. That uh -uh. <laughs> my church member that sold this land, what can he do to me? What can I put in the land? Uh -uh. He's not my brother-in-law. You know all those kind of sentiments. Like I said, in experience as a lawyer has taught me that people, when there is money involved, mm -hmm. or a fool, cheat you. They are always looking for ways to underhand you. Mm. It is your job to make sure that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Then I'd like you to comment briefly on... Uh, you know, I have a saying, it's, it's a Yoruba saying, but I always apply it to land because I feel like that's where it's most applicable. They say 10 kings, 10 seasons. Obamewa, Ibamewa. So I have, <laughs> I, I believe personally that that uh, saying has the most applicability to land, landed property in Yoruba land. Because why is everyone trying to become a king now? You hear that this professor has left the academia and has gone to become a king in some village. Oh, this person, this engineer has come back from the US and has gone to become a king in some big village. Because that's the land. And yeah, yeah. when a new king comes, he resells all the land that, that the previous one sold. So now all the initial buyers come and do some sort of up stamping. Oh, okay, you want 200,000, come and pay 50,000 more to revalidate your title. So what do, you, what do you have to say to that? And is there a way out of the conundrum? What, what I have to say is, see, as a lawyer, I know how amazing the laws we have on Grand Heart. Mm -hmm. The problem is either because of societal lack of will to enforce them Just or the like governmental lack of will. You like that way. After all these things. Number one, whether you are a traditional ruler and your forefathers have been uh, uh, kings before time, before they found Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The thing we have now is that laws govern us. Okay. If I have everything I should on a land, nobody has the right. I should be able to defend that land anyway. The worst you would do is sue me to the court. And you won't win because I have already registered my title. I have done all I should do. I have legal title now. What do you want to say I did? Okay. Um, a new trend came up. Some people put, pasted there, and this land belongs to Madame Eforo Yetinubu and as such, you are to live there in five days. And by the way, like, <laughs> guy, this land has been in this family for more than 60 years. Uh -huh. Oh, how do we verify? How do we verify? They got a C of O. Okay. Now, I have a two go. You are telling me you have title. Bring your own title. Let's compare it. Side by side. Exactly. A lot of these documents on their face, you can tell which is valid and which isn't. Mm -hmm. Another thing, that is a job of your lawyer to know. You will exactly. see two documents and conclude, oh, no. Exactly. This one is valid. They will give you a fake document and you will be able to tell the original. But it's the job of your lawyer to look at these things and be able to verify them. So it's 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 constant. I know kings come and they say no, and they so they say for Christ's sake, you are a progeny, progenitor of the former king. You are sitting on the same stool. It was that same stool that transferred the title to me. Generally, if I have registered my title anyways, there's nothing you can see. Last last, we will carry ourselves and go to Abuja. Mm -hmm. oh, we will settle the matter and I will still not give you anything. <laughs> okay, so um, next question I want to ask now is that if I discover that I have uh, bought a an invalid title with a defective title, what is the way forward for me or is there no remedy for me? Yeah, there is remedy. There is always remedy. Now, if your title is invalid, it means that the person that gave you gave you an invalid title. 
So the natural cause of action, take that person. This is, is sometimes a simple letter will solve the problem. Okay. Which sometimes write for you anyway. If you think you can write the letter, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you and I know that no layman can write that kind of letter. But hey, let's can write it. <laughs> Something as simple as invitation by the police solves mm. that problem. I don't subscribe to that practice. Okay. Well, it's rampant now. So I've seen it solve issues like that. Something as simple, hey, you sold land that, you, that had a valid title. Police came in, arrested the person. I, I, I will be paying your money back. Oh, no problem. We understand. Or they you go to court. They could arrest under obtaining by false pretense. Yes, yes, yes. yes they could. And then... You can go to court. Naturally, I told you, remember I told you that there is supposed to be an indemnity clause embedded in your deed of assignment. Yeah. That indemnifies that the seller says he will indemnify you. Mm -hmm. it, in short, it's not just invalid title. Sometimes the new buyer spends money to defend the title he got from the buyer. From the or rather the new owner spends money to defend the title he got from the previous owner. Oh, I'm, I just bought land, and then somebody is saying, I'm saying, no, the person that sold to me is not the valid owner. Now, if I spend money in court, it means that, that indemnity clause means that the seller will cover my cost of litigation. Okay. So when you activate the indemnity clause in the deed of assignment, it covers for all that. It means ah, this land you sold to me is bad. It's bad title you gave me. So mm -hmm. Give me my money. Oh, ah, the land you sold to me, somebody just sued me because of it. And I spent money to defend myself. Please give me my money. Okay. You understand? Okay. So that it doesn't occasion uh, injustice. Yes. Yeah. That's why I always advise deed of assignment. Thank you so much. So um, if you don't want to go to court to I'd uh, advise you to explore the option of ADR, you know, I'm a mediator, so I know that it works. And uh, so you could explore other means, but mediation is faster, it's easier, and it's almost free in some situations. For instance, if you go to a government established mediation house or mediation center, it's practically free. But uh, the issue now is that for mediation, both parties must be willing. So if uh, the seller is a reasonable party, that's when mediation will be uh, applicable because if they do not consent to being bound by the mediation session, it's really like uh, you know wasting time. So you still have to proceed to court. So uh, the next question, we're almost done. It's almost as if I should not, we should not end this session because I'm enjoying myself. Even I am learning something new. I know that viewers are going to let us know in the comment section, you know, what they're taking away from this uh, and uh, how, how enjoyable they found the session. I know that they would agree with me. And if they say that, oh, bring this lawyer back, we are definitely going to bring uh, him back. So um, the next question I want to ask is, just give us a brief rundown of all the documents that uh, uh, we're supposed to have in a, a land transaction. Give us a rundown of the documentations that are necessary in sale of land. Like I have my money, I want to buy land now. What are the documents that I will execute throughout until the ending point? Okay, so if you're buying land, after you have done search, you know, you've done uh, your due diligence, oh, fine, I'm interested in buying this land. Mm -hmm. First of all, always start with an offer letter. Okay. A letter to the seller saying, well, I'm interested in this land. This is how much I intend to buy it for. You understand? Now, that affords you the opportunity to look under the skirt. How do I mean? So you saw a property or land on the roadside, says for sale. Naturally, nobody will want to show you their title documents or title readings. Yes. But when there's an offer letter involved, mm -hmm. send you those. You use that to do your complete search. Okay. After the search, if there's payment plan involved, when I mean payment plan, oh, I'm not going to pay the 20 million at once. I'm going to pay it over two years. Or I'm going to pay it over six months. You execute a sale of land agreement or a contract of sale, whether land 
or property. Mm. So in that contract of sale, it's going to stipulate, oh, in month one, I'm going to pay social so amount of money. In month two, I'm going to pay social so amount of money. In month three, I'm going to pay social so amount of money. In month four, it's going to be really detailed about the payments, how much it will be, it's the manner they will be. Mm -hmm. It will be detailed, such that nothing is left to chance. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I default in paying, what, what will happen if I don't complete my payments in this time? What if I cancel the, oh, uh, the seller is not supposed to sell the property or the land? You understand? So if, if, I'm, if I'm interested in this land and I'm started paying and somebody comes tomorrow and says, I have time to stop that money. Because of that agreement on grant, you won't be able to sell it. Mm -hmm. So you need a contract of sale. Now, in the contract of sale, it, it will stipulate that, oh, at the end of this whole thing, no, the seller must execute a deed of assignment. Whatever you are doing, always make sure you end up at a deed of assignment. Okay. It's a document that allows the seller, now an assignor, mm -hmm. to sell to the purchaser that will be called an assignee, saying, oh, I assigned this portion of land belonging to me, to this person. And then after that, please ensure, please ensure that you register your interest on the land in all relevant places. In all relevant places. Okay. That should be. Thank you so much. So um, the last question that I want to ask is, um, what is the role of a lawyer in all of this? Before, we, before you answer that question, let me just say that uh, if you have uh, watched up to this um, point, you have done yourself a world of good because you now understand a lot of things that you probably did not know or did not avert your mind to about landed transactions, uh, um, land, uh, sale of land and you know property transactions in Nigeria. So I know that you had a little challenge with a network, the first part of this session, but if you take the pain to watch the first part and this part, you would watch it through, you would uh, be able to capture, you know, the whole essence of the session, you know, uh, in a complete form. And then uh, you would also agree that this last question is just, you know, fulfilling all righteousness because if you've been following from start, you would already understand that you need a lawyer. A lawyer is crucial and you even need somebody like Mr. Bolade here because you can see that he knows his onions. I mean, the way he has been talking to us and the things he has been saying all morning, you will know that uh, you can just dump your land transaction on him and go to sleep and he will secure <laughs> your interest. Honestly, that's how I feel about this session. So I'm going to ask you to tell us the role of a lawyer in all of this and then share your contacts with uh, the audience. Like if they want to contact you, how do they get through to you? You could, uh, if, you're, if, if you're okay with uh, sharing your uh, phone number, it's fine. But if it's, you know, it's on YouTube and all of that. So if you're not uh, cool with that, you could share your email address or, you know, some other contact that can maybe your social media handles where they can easily okay. link you up. So, yeah. So. Okay, so uh, what a lawyer does in a land or property transaction, it's a plethora of things, a plethora of things, too much. Uh, so if I'm your lawyer, I'm supposed to ensure that the title you're getting is valid. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do all the necessary search in the places you have thought of and, and the places you have not thought of. Mm -hmm. That's part of my job. Okay, after I do all that, I want to understand how the transaction will go down. What are the peculiarities? Am I, are we paying at once or we are paying in, in batches? Oh, if we're doing that, fine. My job is to, call, to bring all those things together and put it in a document that you both will sign and it's will binding so that we do not have stories that touch at the end. Oh, okay, apart from that, I'm looking at, I, I look at, the viability of a property. A lawyer is supposed to be able to do that for you too. Oh, this property, if you buy it now, will you be able to, is it mobile? Can you sell it off as soon as possible? It's not really a lawyer's job, but because we handle a wide range of transactions. <laughs> now and then we are, we sort of, uh, we sort of get 
baptized in the ability to say this property is valuable, this one isn't. Mm -hmm. So we do estate yeah. valuation as well. So we do valuation. It might not be uh, it might not be pinpoint, but we can give a general idea of what to expect. Mm -hmm. There's that. There's the fact that your lawyer is the one. Please, I beg you, if you don't take anything away from this session, take the fact that your lawyer should be the one to draft your deed of assignment. It is a very important document. The party's lawyer. Yeah, the seller's, the buyer's lawyer. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a very important document. It shouldn't contain mistakes or typos. It shouldn't contain ambiguous clauses. And the lawyer is supposed to ensure that. It should be enough to protect your interest on that land. If you won't do anything else, please ensure that your it's a lawyer that drafts your deed of assignment. I have seen deed of assignments drafted by surveyors. I have seen another one drafted by a property agent. The problem was five minutes into reading the agreement, we had to call the person. Oh, this is your deed of assignment you said cannot transfer anything. I have seen where the <laughs> The person paid an exorbitant amount, and the agreements they gave him, the seller gave him, was to transfer interest for 15 years. Basically, they gave him a lease. A lease, a lease old. Wow. After he had paid, you know, for paid. Pay. Exactly. So, all these things are the reasons why you need, I know, I know you see a lot of. Waiting lawyer, they do self <laughs> oh, security and exactly. Good. Oh, and then you have issues with the title. Mm -hmm. The lawyer is supposed to de decipher the easiest ways to get you out of it. Also, are we going to the police? Are we just going to write them? Do we want to go to court? There are some families that if you write them later, the next tomorrow, they won't answer. They won't answer you. Yes. But there are some families that the moment they see, they invite them in zone two <laughs> or something. Like, ah, please, we'll pay your money. No, don't want pay your money. You understand? So different strokes for different folks. Your lawyer is supposed to help out with all that. Now, for my contacts, I'm reachable on on my uh, Gmail. Okay. Ladipo two at gmail.com. I repeat. Ladipo Bolade2 at gmail.com. I am on Instagram as Ladipo Bolade. I am on uh, Facebook as Ladipo Kendi. And then my other email is uh, Ladipo Bolade at yahoo.com. Oh, great. You're a digital lawyer. I like that. <laughs> I, I probably don't any mail or questions I get will okay. be attended as soon as possible, time your speed. Thank you so much. What, you. what can we say to thank you for this wonderful, wonderful session? It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, and I'm glad that we've been able to get it done with. It's really been a very enlightening session, even for me as a lawyer, and I'm sure for our viewers. Thank you so much for coming. We're hoping that we we'll call you again, as they say on radio. <laughs> you would answer us again. Yes. Very good. Uh, Guys, if you've watched and gotten value, I hope you like the video and I hope that you subscribe to the channel and share this video with as many people as need it. Because, you know, we all need to secure our interests as far as landed property and, you know, land transactions is concerned oh. or are concerned in Nigeria. And our laws are, you know, comprehensive enough if we would only go a step further to develop the will to enforce them. So thank you so much for staying till the end. This is where we draw the curtain on this very first episode. First time I'm bringing someone on my channel and it's really, really been, you know, I'm really happy that we've been able to do it. Thank you so much. So, bye. To do, like I always say. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah. I'm ending it from here.